Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Angry Astronaut. You know, at this particular moment, I am both thrilled and incredibly pissed. I mean, obviously, I've got to be extremely excited over what has just happened, the successful launch and docking of the Crew Dragon. I mean, that was just amazing and flawless. And also, my collaborative work that I'm doing with To The Future, they just released uh, episode three of that collaboration, and I strongly recommend that you head over there and subscribe and check it out. And guess what? you're also going to be able to get one of these, one of your own starships, and as a matter of fact, your own Crew Dragon too, but you can put it on your mantelpiece like this through an exclusive offer through the Angry Astronaut. So why am I pissed? Well, it's because of the Crew Dragon, strangely enough. You see, back when the shuttle used to provide transportation to the ISS, they would take seven people at a time. I mean, they wouldn't leave seven people, but sometimes as many as 13 people would be on the ISS at a given moment. I mean, it was incredible. And the Crew Dragon can also carry seven astronauts. But guess what? NASA does not intend to use all seven seats. I mean, why? Why is this the case? And also, there's only going to be a couple of missions a year, plus cargo missions, and the Dragon is going to be facing fierce competition from Boeing, as difficult as that is to believe, and also Sierra Nevada, I'll get into that in a little bit. So, I mean, what's going on here? Is, is the Crew Dragon going to end up being an underused spacecraft, or can it have other uses that are more important and more lucrative and more key to SpaceX's future ambitions than NASA could ever offer? So, the Crew Dragon was a stunning success. Fantastic. And the collaboration with NASA is going to be a wonderful thing. But unfortunately, SpaceX is going to have competitors. And NASA doesn't seem to be planning to use the Crew Dragon a tremendous amount. Only four passengers at a time so far. And only a couple of times a year. And eventually they may find themselves competing with the Starliner, even though it's ridiculously expensive by comparison. Makes no sense to me, but it may very well happen. So, that being the case, what else can we possibly do with the Crew Dragon? We've talked about space tourism. I'm going to go into that a little bit more in detail, but you'd be surprised as to all the things that could be done with an orbital ship that can carry seven passengers and has all that space and all that cargo capacity that can stay up in orbit for as many days as the Crew Dragon can. So let's get right to it right now. Now, as many of you know, of all the things that NASA is doing, this is one of the main things that piss me off. In the world of competitive bids, you're supposed to pay attention to the price and the quality. And yet, when the Starliner finally flies, they're going to be charging $90 million a seat versus 55 for SpaceX, and as they have clearly shown, their product is inferior. There's absolutely no reason why NASA needs to continue with Boeing on this particular product. The Dragon has proven itself to be far superior. But this is not the most significant competition that the Dragon has to face. 
Sometime next year, nestled inconspicuously in the fairing of a Vulcan rocket will be the most significant competition that SpaceX has when it comes to hauling cargo. It is innovative, it is reusable, it is relatively inexpensive, and even though it flies on a ULA rocket, which gives SpaceX an advantage there, this ship has a lot of unique advantages that are going to give the Dragon a real run for its money when it comes to cargo capacity. And this is the Sierra Nevada Dream Chaser, which I have covered a couple of times in the past. Now between its own cargo capacity and that little module on the back called the Shooting Star, this vessel has the capacity to carry more cargo than the Dragon, as much as 2,000 kilograms more, depending on which source you look at. Plus, it also has a larger docking port, which means it's capable of carrying bulkier cargo. It's going to be a very, very strong competitor to the Dragon by 2021. And as you can see, it also has the same kind of reusability that the Dragon has, and also has the future capacity of carrying passengers. Now, it's gentle re-entry that you're watching right now, and its ability to land on runways, and the type of fuel it uses when it lands, gives it the capacity to deliver very delicate experiments, which the Dragon has a harder time doing. Though, so how does the Crew Dragon deal with this competition and what future missions are they going to have when you have a ship that's designed to carry seven people and yet no missions in the foreseeable future from NASA that uses all seven seats? I mean, was this vessel designed for a need that no longer exists? Well, no, not the case at all. The solution to the problem, which SpaceX has already figured out, is to not use NASA at all, or to not rely on them anyway. First of all, the Crew Dragon can carry out private experiments for independent companies and institutions that don't get their experiments carried out on the ISS because frankly, the astronauts on the ISS are overworked. They have to maintain the station, perform hundreds of experiments every year, most of them oriented towards NASA's agenda, and a lot of the other experiments by these independent Independent agencies tend to be pushed to the side. If they're short term and be, can be carried out in orbit over the course of a few days, the Crew Dragon can carry those things out and on a much better timetable than the ISS could offer. And then, of course, there's space tourism, which Elon Musk announced a few months ago and is going to begin in 2021. Now, space tourism carries out a lot of different functions, as I've mentioned before. Obviously, there's money involved, a lot of money in the millions of dollars per seat. Plus, the tourists need to be accompanied by experienced astronauts. That's going to be a necessity, allowing SpaceX to continue training a core of astronauts to be used on the Starship in the future. Of course, you've probably heard that this guy wants to shoot a movie on the ISS using the Crew Dragon for transportation, and that's probably going to require all seven seats. And if this turns out to be a successful endeavor, then other movie studios will also want to take advantage of the Crew Dragon's capabilities. Therefore, another source of revenue and another source of publicity for SpaceX. And another critical source of data from the Crew Dragon is going to come from the fact that it has to do this. Re-entry, 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 and this time with humans on board, which SpaceX has never done in the past. And even though they're using a different heat shield, the experience that they gain from doing this time and time again with human passengers will give them invaluable experience in learning how to do this with the Starship when the time comes for that mammoth vessel to re-enter an atmosphere on a regular basis. 
but it's SpaceX collaboration with these guys that's probably going to be the most important future mission that the Crew Dragon has sometime next year. For those of you unfamiliar, unfamiliar with Axiom Space, they're the ones who are planning to set up the first commercial, privately owned space station in human history. Now on January 27th, NASA decided to allow Axiom to make use of a docking port on their Harmony module on the ISS to start building their station, and SpaceX and the Crew Dragon will be taking an Axiom team up to the station in 2021, and Axiom will then begin adding modules onto the Harmony module. Now the first module will have docking ports and what's called an Earth Observatory, which you can see down at the bottom, which is a much more ambitious view of the NASA port that they use to observe the Earth right now. From what I can see, it's going to offer much more magnificent views. Now this module will be added in 2024, followed by a habitation module in 2025, and a research and manufacturing module in 2026, all attached to the ISS. And then once all of that is done, it will detach and add a power and thermal module and become its own space station. And of course, the Falcon Heavy and the Crew Dragon will both be invaluable parts of assembling this new station. The Falcon Heavy, or perhaps the Starship, will provide the transportation for the components, and the Crew Dragon, of course, will provide transportation for the astronauts necessary for the crew and the assembly of the station. Therefore, SpaceX will be an integral part of making space a commercial domain for the first time. We are on the cusp of a future where magnificent views like this and the unique adventure that space has to offer the human species need not be an experience reserved for the highly trained members of national space agencies or for the extremely rich. Thanks to SpaceX and the Crew Dragon and its ability to place stations like Axiom's into orbit, and once the Starship becomes a reality, these sorts of things might become a reality for all of us. What a thing to look forward to. As a matter of fact, I think I forgot that I was angry. And perhaps more importantly, because of the Crew Dragon and because of organizations like Axiom, scientific organizations across the planet can finally have their experiments carried out in a timely fashion rather than waiting forever for a spot to open up on the ISS and their overworked astronaut crew. This, of course, will lead to scientific breakthroughs of every type and description, which will improve the lives for all of us here on Earth. I mean, look at all the scientific spin-offs that NASA has produced already. Can you imagine if so many more scientific agencies were given access to space and the difference that that would make? And finally, the Crew Dragon will provide SpaceX with the experience that they need in keeping humans alive in the vacuum of space, a very harsh environment, together with the growing crew of experienced astronauts who will be able to make that first journey across interplanetary space to Mars, and eventually take a million of us along with them for the ride. It will be the first step in mankind becoming an interplanetary civilization as Elon Musk has always dreamed of. And this little ship, the Crew Dragon and its crew of seven, will be the start of something truly amazing. Aren't all of you quite excited now? So, I hope I've been able to convey to all of you the extreme importance that the Crew Dragon is going to represent to SpaceX. It's going to be the only human-rated ship that they have at their disposal until the Starship is able to carry people. They're going to need this ship in the worst kind of way, 
as they gather experience and prepare for journeys to the moon and to Mars. And given all of the uses that this ship has, I see a very bright and successful future for the Crew Dragon in the years to come. So as we watch all of this develop, I'm sure it's going to be very exciting. And by the way, don't forget, by the time this video has come out, I am certain that To The Future has part three of our collaboration up and running. Visit their channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do and check out chapter three because I'll be bringing you the final chapter next week. So until then, as always, stay angry about space.